I'll be talking on templating. Now, what is templating? It's the process of anticipating the correct size and correct position of the implant prior to surgery. We all probably have done it in school when we have used our stencils. Before templating, it is wise to know how to take a ideal X-ray. For the hip AP view, the central ray should be perpendicular to the midline of the patient, two inches inferior to the anterior superior leg spine and two inches superior to the pubic symphysis in an average size patient. Look at these three X-rays, one in neutral, mild internal rotation of 15 to 20 degrees and gross internal rotation. The lesser trochanter keeps disappearing as you internally rotate. So the X-ray that you need is the one B, is the B X-ray where the internal rotation is around 15 to 20 degrees. The part of the lesser trochanter is seen. At least three millimeter of the lesser trochanter should be seen. The whole neck is visualized and the greater trochanter is well delineated. There are two types of lateral X-rays. One is the cross table lateral and the frog leg lateral. Now what is the role of magnification? Basically it is defined as an image size by object size and is equal to the standard image diameter upon the standard object diameter which is the source to image distance divided by the source to object distance. I am sure none of you have followed this. So cons <coughs> decided that he will place a coin close to the femur and take an x-ray. The coin measurement is already known and hence any magnification can be measured accordingly. And studies have confirmed that this is one of the most accurate methods of templating. Now there are two ways to take an x-ray. One is you place the cassette directly under the buttock or you place it two inches on the two inches below the buttock that is on the tray of the cassette. If you place it directly under the buttock, you have a 10% magnification. But if it is two inches away, then it, uh, your magnification can increase from 15 to 20%. And it's known that a magnification error of 6% is sufficient to give a single step error in the calculation of the acetabular size, whereas an error of at least 30% is required to cause one size error in the femoral component. Now, what are the things that we see on a normal X-ray? You have to look at the diameter of the femoral canal, the greater trochanter, the saddle or the area between the greater trochanter and the neck, the lesser trochanter, the acetabular roof, the teardrop, this is on the femoral side. On the pelvic sides, you look at both the foramen, you look at the pubic symphysis, the sacrum and the coccyx. You also draw the Kohler's line or the ilio line. You delineate the acetabular fossa, teardrop, anterior and posterior wall of the acetabulum. Now what is an ideal x-ray? An ideal x-ray is one where the pubic symphysis is in line with the coccyx. Any deviation or a not well centralized x-ray will give you this view where the long axis of the pubic symphysis and the sacrum are not in same line. If the X-ray looks like this. Be assured that this is an inlet view because the obturator foramen looks like cat eyes, and the distance between the pubic symphysis and the coccyx is more than three centimeters. In the outlet view, you have a large obturator foramen, and you do not see the coccyx at all. There are two lines that we need to draw. One is the interischial line drawn from the lower end of the ischial tuberosities, and the teardrop line drawn from the inferior edge of the both the tear, teardrops. Both these are required to assess limb length. Now what about femoral offset and acetabular offset? Acetabular offset is the distance between the center of the femoral head and the true floor of the acetabulum. Whereas the femoral offset is the distance from the center of rotation of the femoral head to the long bisect to a line bisecting the long axis of the femur. Why do you use a template? One, it is to reproduce your hip biomechanics. 
allows the surgeon to anticipate potential difficulties and helps in minimizing limb length discrepancy. Now, where do you need this maximum? You probably do it on all hips, but you need it more when you are dealing with dysplastic acetabulums, protrusio acetabulums. You have to assess the femoral bowing and in extreme neck angles. Now, if you anticipate all these problems, your operating inventory would not look like this. As, uh, these are the various size of the templates for the acetabulum. Mark the center of rotation of the acetabular component. Mark your teardrop. Place your template. The medial side should be on at the inferior edge of the teardrop or in slightly inferiorly. The medial border of the cup should never cross the coolers line and it should be angulated at 40 degrees or there should be an inclination of 40 to 45 degrees. As far as the femoral side goes, just flush the template between both the cortexes. Depending on which size length or based on your offset, you can use a long neck, medium or a short neck. Always cut the neck cut should be just 0.5 centimeters to 1 centimeters above the highest point of the lesser trochanter. In case you cut your neck higher than this, there are chances that you may put the hip in varus. You may have to have a higher cut in a coxa valga patient and a lower cut in coxa vara. For people who do posterior incisions, the point to be noted here is the lesser trochanter. You go for 0.5 to 1 centimeter above. But for those who take an anterior approach, you have to approach it through the saddle. The arc of rotation of the femur and the arc of the rotation of acetabulum are different. If you place your femoral arc of rotation on the femur higher than the arc of rotation of the acetabulum, you will get lengthening when the hip is reduced. A word about cementing. If you aim for a cemented stem, always keep 2 to 3 millimeter of cement mantle ready. So in summary, pre-operative templating is extremely helpful. It improves the accuracy and precision. Very important to get an adequate pre-op radiograph. Stepwise approach should be followed and execute the pre-op planning intraoperatively to recreate the normal anatomy for the patient. Thank you.